Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church here in Plainfield, Illinois, as we celebrate this 24th Sunday after the Pentecost, which also means we are like at the second last Sunday of the church year. During these last few Sundays of the church year, we continue our theme of looking forward to Christ coming again. Today we hear how, the, how Paul is reminding us to remain faithful, stay awake, be sober-minded. We'll find out more about these in our message for today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness, and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, we have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light children of the day we are not of the night or of the darkness so then let us not sleep as others do but let us keep awake and be sober for those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk are drunk at night but since we belong to the day let us be sober having put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord, Thanks be to God. God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our text for today is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, as St. Paul reminds us to be sober and awake. Now you might be saying, Pastor, most of the time I am sober and awake, and that is a good thing. But we live in a world where distractions can come very quickly, and in the midst of those distractions may come our attention. And then all of a sudden, we forget 
about something. Just as an illustration, something that happened to me just the other day as I was on my bike heading home from church. I was on a bike path and there was a young woman with a young child and a little dog out enjoying the bike path and enjoying the outside. Nothing wrong with that, except for the little dog was a little rambunctious and then the little one was following the little rambunctious dog. And all of a sudden, as I was approaching this family, the entire bike lane was blocked. The little dog, the little boy, and the mom. Well, what was the mom doing? The mom was staring at her cell phone. And I know sometimes people say, what can be so important on the cell phone that you're not even paying attention to your own little son and little dog? Well, we do get distracted pretty quickly. And when we do get distracted, we might lose sight of something extremely precious. Now for this young woman, she only lost sight of her child and dog for probably a minute and then she quickly refocused, pulled them out of the way and I was able to pass on by. But it gives us a beautiful illustration on how quick it is for Christians and any people to lose sight of something really important all for the sake of something that's really trivial like a cell phone and text messages, or even a phone call. But yet we see distracted drivers around and sometimes those distractions are a little bit more costly than a pastor who has to wait a second or two for the bike path to clear. I have no grudges against the young woman, but again, it's a beautiful illustration for us as Christians to ask ourselves, what is really important? So St. Paul reminds Christians that we need to stay awake. We need to be sober-minded, meaning we need to be alert. One of the interesting things when we think about being sober, we might think of sober being the opposite of intoxicated. And typically when we think of intoxication, we may think of drugs and alcohol. And probably most of the people who are hearing this message, we are probably thinking, I don't have any problems with that. But it's interesting if you go back to that word intoxication for a moment. It implies something. If you go back to the old English or Latin root of it, and that is a toxin. Is there a toxin within us? The answer is yes. It's called sin. It's part of our nature, and our sinful nature delights in indulging in sin. And what happens when we indulge in sin? You could say we become intoxicated and are not able to see clearly the gift of faith that God has given to us. And when we get to that state of intoxication, we may be even willing to give up that gift of faith. And that's what St. Paul is warning us and saying, hang on to that gift of faith. Hang on to that faith with all your heart, soul, and strength, and not just on Sunday mornings, but every day, every moment of our lives. But too often, like a lot of Christians do what a lot of the young people may also like to do, but in a different way, and let me use this as an illustration. It's called energy drinks. What do I mean by energy drinks? Those drinks that sort of speed you up and give you a little bit more energy to get through the moment. But the problem with those drinks are what happens when they wear off after a few hours? There's like a crash. There's a rebound, and then all of a sudden, the body almost seems to be in worse state. Sometimes many Christians like to follow that type of path in life in regards to their Christian faith. They have lots of energy to be faithful, but then they have a little bit of a crash and burn then after a period of time. St. Paul gives us 
an idea that we're supposed to be sober-minded all the time, that we're always supposed to put our faith and trust in God. This isn't a massive burst of energy. This is like an endurance race. So let me pick up what the author of the Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. What does it mean to run with endurance? It means to always be faithful, always praying, always connected to God through his word and his sacraments. I know with endurance, it takes a lot of strength to do it. We might enjoy the shorter races, you know, the, the running races between the couch and maybe the refrigerator or the couch and the bathroom. The author of the Hebrews uses the idea of endurance, not short races, not bursts of quick energy, but long, continual pacing. So this day, as we look forward to the coming of Christ, we have to ask ourselves, are we sober? So let's take that spiritual sobriety test, so to speak. So what would a spiritual sobriety test look like? Well, first of all, ask yourself this question. Do you believe that Jesus is coming again? And I hope and pray you're saying yes. And that would be correct. Then the second one, which is really telling, is do you believe that Jesus can come at any moment? He could come before the sermon is done. And you might be thinking, how long is the sermon, Pastor? It's not going to be that much more longer. But do you believe that he can come at any moment? And if you understand that the answer is yes, and that you need to run with endurance the race that is set before you, and be awake and sober-minded, then you have passed that sobriety test. But if you find yourself putting God off on the shelf and focusing on other things, being distracted by various things from this world, then maybe we fail that sobriety test. So we need to hear these words from St. Paul to remind us to always be faithful. For Christ is coming, and he is coming soon. We don't know whether that soon is the next second, the next minute, hour, year, decade, century, or millennia. It doesn't matter. What matters is that Christ is coming again, and he's coming soon. So this day we rejoice and are thankful for the gift of faith that God has given to us, and we ask God to continue to send us that Holy Spirit so that we may always be faithful and run with endurance the race that is set before us, because Christ is coming, and he's coming soon. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. You have made us your people and preserved us through the ministry of your word and sacraments. Continue to pour out upon us grace upon grace, 
that we would be kept in faith and guarded in hope. Make your church throughout the world one in doctrine, confession, and life, and give to your church faithful pastors who will preach and teach your word with conviction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, deliver the nations from oppressive and ungodly rulers. Bless all in authority within our own nation, that righteousness may flourish and injustice end. Bless all those places where your people teach and learn, that our children may honor you, walk in your commands, and show forth in their lives the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, prevent all disaster and calamity, deliver us from war and violence, and spare us from pestilence. Help us to know and rejoice in the good fruits of the earth. Bless all noble occupations and help the arts to flourish, that our lives may be enriched by beauty. Help us to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of the earth you supply for our common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give healing to the sick, relief to the suffering, grieving hope, and to the dying, peace. Hear us especially on behalf of those who have requested our prayers. Andy, Gary, Dave, Brett, Karen, Tony, Sandy, Angie, Joe, Luann, Chuck, Clyde, Tom, Jean, Pete, Howard, Ken, Kathy, Kelly, Jeff, Charlie, Kim and Joey, AJ, Erica, Bob, Laura, Walter, Paul, Bernil, and Jean. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.